I know that it gets boring after a while, but, you know, someone has to say something, someone has to stand up and be counted, and I really believe we do need to stand up and be counted, and we must stop things happening that look bad in the world. And I'm talking about us now, Britain, as well as America, and we have to be squeaky clean. We can't have these secret renditions where, I do believe it's probably stopped now, but where we scooped people off the street and they just vanished and we piled them off to secret jails in places where we could use our money and influence that they wouldn't mind, places like Poland and Romania, and they had to refuel in Britain, and that it came to light. People in Britain are not pleased about that, and I wouldn't be either, and... Um, you know, we shouldn't be pleased about it. We shouldn't be saying, oh, it don't matter, you know, as long as we get uh, a result. It does matter. Your name does matter. You do need to be conscious of what is done in your name and how it looks. Um, you know, otherwise, what's what's the point? You know, if you, if you didn't care about what your neighbours thought, about what people thought of you, then why not? You could have just been the, um, the playground bully who just um, used his weight and his uh, the terror tactics to um, be lord of the manor, you know, but it's not the law of the jungle anymore, and we do need to have respect of our neighbours, and we do need to care for our neighbours, and we must be conscious of what people do in our name. I remember as a serving soldier in Germany where uh, quite often you talk to Germans who would say, well, you know, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know this was all happening. And, you know, a lot of Brit soldiers would tend to say, well, of course you did. You must have known. How could you have not known that this was all going on, that uh, in, there were these camps and these atrocities were happening? And, um, you know, quite often the Germans would say that they, they were oblivious to it. Well, you know... Um, we could be oblivious to what's happening in the Far East. We could be oblivious to Guantanamo Bay, the fact that it doesn't affect us. We could be oblivious to the fact that it's quite possible that there's been torturing, um, waterboarding, as they call it, and all sorts of other means of sleep deprivation or whatever they've used, techniques. And what gets me is, you know, it's a bit like the... Um, uh, uh, the executions, you you can't be sure. I mean, a lot of people would say to me, well, what are you going to do with a child rapist or whatever? Fine, but you cannot all be, always be sure. There have been wrongful uh, executions, and, and the same applies here, that, you know, you can't trust that the people who have been rounding, rounded up and have been spent five years in Guantanamo Bay are you know, really supposed to be there because, you know what, people, America put a price on people's heads that, you know, you bring us a terrorist, we'll pay you whatever, $5,000 or whatever. Now, the people that live out there in dust bowls, in mud huts and without electricity and whatever, you know, that's offering them, what, two or three years' wages to turn someone in. So what happens? Any gay, any um, gypsy, anyone who hasn't got a family, anyone who happens to be a bit of a, um, a dropout or whatever, is scooped up off the street and sold to the Americans as a terrorist. Now, that's quite possibly what we've got in Guantanamo, and no one cares. To me, that's hateful. You know, you people need to care. We need to care. We don't know that these people are guilty, and if we don't have the proper process of law, we'll never know. And I heard one politician say, we'll keep them there till they die, because then they can't be terrorists. We don't know they're terrorists. We can't rely on the justice system. We can't rely on the justice system that we have here in America, let alone the one that they might have in Guantanamo and the military one and uh, the fact that these people may not have anything against them at all. Uh, at so far, the cases that have been put forward have all been very fishy to me, very fishy. Uh, and, you know, we've got to stop this. I know it's all going to turn around when there's a new power in force. And I know that most people listening to this will say, oh, yeah, left, 
winger, liberal, tree hugger, and all that crap. I've a, I've been a military man, and I've served many good causes, and I didn't have to go to Falklands, and I didn't have to see blood spilt or fire sh uh, shots fired in anger, but I did have to do my thing in Berlin, and I did go through Checkpoint Charlie and take risks with the Russians who could have arrested me, and I could never have been seen again, possibly, when I was there, and... Uh, was having to go through all these checkpoints, but that's not the point. The point is that, you know, we, we have to have a conscience, and um, we can't just go to dinner and say, the hell with it, it doesn't affect me. And there's too many people who are like that, who actually work on the basis of, it doesn't affect me, so what? I'm going to dinner. You know, just like Rwanda. Uh, and there's a line in that movie that is perfect, where, you know, you've got all this uh, killing, and it's all captured on, on um, film, and this American... Um, uh, filmmaker, videographer is is capturing all this terrible stuff and one of the locals says, thank God, you know you're capturing it, at last America will realise what's going on and the cameraman says, yes and I'm afraid they'll watch it and then they'll turn their TV off and they'll go to dinner and it'll be forgotten and that is the discompassionate figure, uh, uh, view that I seem to be getting all the time, and that has to stop. I've seen it in mental, in the mental uh, disease aspects here in America, also of uh, of a case in Pensacola with a guy who was obviously out of his mind, ripped his clothes off, and ran down the street, banging his head against shop windows and generally causing a nuisance to himself. So they just did a Bonnie and Clyde on him and and plugged him and just basically killed the guy and just full, full him, filled him full of lead. I mean, I don't know whether he was holding a shard of glass or what reason there, reasons there were for killing him, but I've seen that no end of times happening, and it disgusts me and it worries me, and I am anxious to turn that around because this is my country. This is my adopted country. I want to be proud of it. I want my people back home uh, to be able, not to be able to say, Oh yeah, you're in America, right? And uh, yeah, well, we've read what goes on there, and you know, world opinion matters. It really does matter, just the same as it matters what people think of you in your community, what they think of you in your church, what they think of you in your workplace. We must use that same uh, ideology of it matters what people think of us in the world. We cannot go on thinking we're mightier than you. We don't. We don't have to care what you think which is just, coming back to that, it's just the same philosophy of the uh, playground bully who thinks, I rule, it's my domain, and I don't have to care about you minnows, I don't have to care about you nerds, because, you know, I can defeat you all, and therefore I'm top dog. You know, his reign is, tends to be short-lived. It doesn't last forever. And the reign of the Roman Empire was short-lived, as has been most... Uh, 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 mightier than thou domains. So, you know, please folks, please do your bit to stand up against it and turn things around and let's be proud again and let me be proud of my adopted country. Thank you.